Okay, video two. In this video, we're going to look at defining a, a sequence, determining whether a sequence, and determining whether a sequence converge or diverge. In this unit, because it's so abstract, students often ask, when will I ever need this? Well, if you decide to pro, uh, program to the machine level, or use assembly language as it's called, you will need to understand this. This is the math that um, helps your calculators do what it does. So we're going to start by just talking about a sequence as a list of numbers. These notes can be found on page one of your packet. A sequence is a list of numbers written in an explicit order. In this class, we will do a lot of talking about the nth term. In this section, n represents positive integers only. The domain of n is positive integers. If the domain is finite, meaning that there are a limited number of numbers in the term, it's, um, it's considered finite. In this class, we will mostly deal with infinite sequences. We can express a sequence explicitly, which is this is the way that you will see it written mostly in this class. If we wanted to find the 100th term, we would plug in 100 for n. Sequences can also be defined recursively. We don't do that as much in this class. In a recursive sequence, you use the previous term to find the next term. So in order to find um, the second term, you need be the first term. In this, you can also look at arithmetic sequences. Again, we will not do a lot with arithmetic sequences in this class. An arithmetic sequence has a common, dif common difference, meaning you're adding the same number each time. Notice to find the common difference, you subtract two of the terms. We can define an arithmetic sequence recursively as well as explicitly. In this class, we will deal mostly with geometric sequences. A geometric sequence has a common ratio. It's the value that is multiplied by um, each term. In this example, r is 2, because um, negative 2, because we're multiplying each term by negative 2 to get the next term. If you want to find r, if you're having a difficult time finding r, just divide two of the terms. We can define it recursively, but once again in this class, we will deal more with explicitly. Now here's a big idea for this section. A sequence will converge if there comes a point when the terms of the sequence remain the same. In other words, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity and the sequence has a finite number, then the term is said to converge. If we take the limit and it does not exist or it goes towards infinity, then it, the sequence is said to diverge. So to determine if a sequence converges or diverges, we need to take the limit. If the limit exists, the sequence converges. If the limit does not exist, the sequence diverges. So if we look at this example, and this example is in your notes, we would take the dominance of the lead term and to say that the answer is 2. We could also break this into two um, expressions, take the limit of each expression, and get the same answer. So we would say the sequence converges, and it converges to 2. Here are some examples that are in your note. Notes, sorry. Basically, what we're going to do is take the limit as n approaches infinity. So for each of these, we would take the limit as n approaches infinity of n times n plus 1. 
Now, because this is going towards infinity and this is going towards infinity, infinity times infinity is infinity. So we say that this sequence diverges. In the next example, at the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of n over 2. Now remember, n is a positive integer. So we'd have like 100 over 2, 5, um, 101 over 2. And as you can see, the values would just go back and forth from positive to negative between negative 1 and, and 1. So because of that, the limit does not exist. We therefore says we will therefore say that the um, sequence diverges. In our next example, again, we can write this as two different um, terms, or we can do dominance of the lead term. We did dominance of the lead term. We see that the highest exponent in the top is n squared. The highest exponent in the bottom is n squared. Um, these two become negligible as we go towards infinity. So the limit is going to be the ratio of those two terms, 5. So we say this converges, and it converges to 5. For this one, we're going to remember that e to the negative n can be written as 1 over e to the n. So as n approaches infinity, this term goes to... 0. As n goes towards infinity, this becomes negligible. So now we're looking at e to the n over e to the 2n, which could be written as um, one, uh, e over e squared raised to the nth power. And we could see from this that actually I said that this would go to, um, this would diverge, but I'm wondering right now, because that's e over e squared, oh, because this is less than 1, this is going to converge. And it converges to 0. Again, even though this can be written as 2 over n, 3 to the n times 3, we still look at the dominance of the lead terms. So since 3 to the n is bigger than 2 to the n, this would converge to 0. And as we said before, n factorial grows faster than exponentials, so this would con the limit of this would be infinity, so it diverges. Okay? All righty. Now, another thing you need to know is the absolute value theorem for sequences. If the absolute values of the term of a sequence converge to zero, then the sequence converges to zero. This uh, theorem becomes important when we have an alternating series. What will make a series alternate is negative 1 to the nth. Why does it make it alternate? Well, let's look at it. When n is equal to zero, this becomes negative 1 to the zero, which is just 1. When n is equal to 1, we get negative 1 to the first power, which would be negative 1. So notice how this term will bounce back and forth from positive to negative. Um, and yeah, my math's wrong there. It's plus 1. <laughs> it's positive 1. So it's going to go back and forth from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. And because of that, we say this alternates. And if this alternates, the only way that it could converge is that if it goes to 0. Otherwise, if it has a limit, it would go from negative 2 to 2, negative 2 to 2, and that doesn't converge. So the only way an alternating series can converge is if its limit is 0. So let's look at a couple examples. This term causes this to alternate. So what we want to look at is the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus 1. By dominance of the lead term, we know that this, is, this limit is 0, so therefore this is going to converge to 0. Once again, this makes this alternate, but the limit 
as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n is 1. And so because it's alternated, it would, it would bounce back and forth between negative 1 and 1. And so because of that, this, we say that this would diverge. Um, this alternates because we can write this as negative 1 to the nth times 3. So this would bounce back and forth. But we know that n factorial grows faster than 3 to the nth power. Sorry, that would still be to the nth. Then 3 to the nth power. And so since n factorial grows faster than the exponential, it's going towards 0. So therefore, this would converge to 0. Well, when I get there, it converges to 0. This diverges because what this is actually not an alternating series. Because the first value of this, when n, if we, if we substituted 0, we'd get 1 plus 1, which is 2. Then if we substituted in 1, we get 1 plus negative 1, which was 0. So we're going to see that this is going to bounce back and forth between 2 and 0. And because it's not going to one value, we say it diverges. This would actually converge. Now this will do the exact same thing. The top is bouncing between 2 and 0. However, because the bottom is increasing at such a rate, let's say when this is 20,000, it doesn't matter if this is 2 or 0, because if I take 2 divided by 20,000, it goes to 0. So therefore, it converges. This is actually not an alternating sequence. This is not an alternating sequence. However, and I think there's a typo here that should be n plus 2. Or maybe not. Maybe it is n minus 2. So let's see what this will do. Well, n minus 2 factorial, if I were to write this out, the next one would be n minus 3, n minus 4, and so forth. But on the bottom, I have n factorial. So that would be n, then n minus 1, n minus 2. So notice there's going to be a point where they start to match each other. And I can cancel these out. So n minus 2, n minus 3. And eventually, all of these would cancel out. So I am left with 1 over n times n minus 1. Excuse me. So because this is going to 0, I say that this converges to 0. That's really the end of video 2. I would like to take a moment and to give you a moment in black history. This is ben Benjamin Banneker. Um, he was a free black man who um, surveyed Washington, D.C., he was also known for writing letters to Thomas Jefferson, politely asking him to change his policy on racial equality. These are some of the things that he's well known for. He constructed his own clock from wood. He was the first American to do that. He published an almanac. He surveyed Washington, D.C. Um, he worked on calculating the pre precise measurement of the meter, and he corresponded with Thomas Jefferson. So he's very well known. Please watch video two. Have a good evening.